In 2018, NASA started something so incredible that it will change the way we travel forever. The agency started work on a supersonic airliner that promises to make the world smaller by enabling us to travel faster. Now, you might be thinking, haven't we been here before? And you'd be right. The supersonic dream was once a reality with the iconic Concorde. But this time, it's different. Humans have always been obsessed with speed. Whether it's the roar of Formula One cars tearing up the track, or the thunderous rush of NASCAR vehicles, speed is a universal thrill. But nothing really embodies human obsession with speed like the Concorde, the ultimate speedster of its time. It took the skies by storm when it first graced the world in 1969. It wasn't just an aircraft, it was a game changer. This sleek, supersonic airliner revolutionized travel, slicing through the sky at an incredible 2,179 kilometers per hour, which is the equivalent of Mach 2.4, and more than twice the speed of sound, covering distances like no other. To put that into perspective, it outpaced the fastest Bugatti, the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus, which has a top speed of 304.773 miles per hour it's also faster than the French TGV, which is the fastest commercial train on steel wheels, with a top speed of 575 kilometers per hour, as well as the Rockwell B-1B Lancer, which is currently the fastest bomber in service in the United States Air Force fleet, with a top speed of approximately Mach 1.25. And what did that speed translate to? Well, imagine traveling from New York to London, Normally, it would take 7 hours and 26 minutes, but on the Concorde, it takes just 2 hours 53 minutes. That's right, the Concorde covered that distance in less than half the time of a regular plane. It was a very fast aircraft, redefining what it meant to cross the Atlantic with lightning speed. While the Concorde seemed like an uncommon plane from the future, it had some uncommon problems of its own. When this supersonic marvel zoomed past the speed of sound, it triggered what's known as a sonic boom. Let me explain how sonic booms work. When an aircraft travels at a speed less than the speed of sound, the air ahead of it begins to flow out of the way before the plane reaches it. The pressure waves created by the airplane passing through the air are smooth and gradual. However, as the aircraft reaches the speed of sound, it catches up to its own pressure waves. The air ahead of it receives no warning of the plane's approach. The airplane plows through the air, creating a shock wave. As air flows through the shock wave, its pressure, density, and temperature all increase sharply and abruptly. Usually, people think that it's just one boom when it crosses that barrier, but these waves pile up in front of the plane forming a continuous sonic boom throughout its supersonic journey. That's right, it's not just a one-time bang, it's a consistent sonic companion. The Concorde's boom was so thunderous that it got restricted to specific flight paths, mainly sticking to transatlantic routes. Now, efficiently was another hurdle. Back when it was designed, the Concorde guzzled fuel like there was no tomorrow. It was a speed demon that chomped through energy, making it a costly affair. In 1977, a one-way ticket between London and Washington cost around $548, which, adjusted for inflation, would equate to about $2,800. By 1996, a round trip across the Atlantic on the Concorde could set you back a cool $12,500. In comparison, the same flight in the Boeing 747-400 costs about $482 in the same year. Then, as if all these weren't enough, the crash of Air France Flight 4590 in 2000 shattered the public confidence in the Concorde safety. With high ticket prices and these issues piling up, Concorde soon started on its path to retirement. First, Air France dropped it, then British Airways, and soon the aircraft eventually bowed out in 2003, closing the chapter on its supersonic legacy. As the world continues to crave the thunderous speed and exhilarating possibilities of supersonic travel, the revival efforts aimed at resuscitating this airborne marvel have continued. NASA is diving headfirst into the race to bring back supersonic travel, investing over $2.3 million in projects aiming to crack the code on commercial supersonic flights. At the heart of this pursuit, NASA's X-59 aircraft, a key player in their Quest mission. 
The Quest Quiet Supersonic Technology mission is a project by NASA with two main goals, which includes designing and building the X-59, a research aircraft equipped with technology that reduces the loudness of a sonic boom to a gentle thump audible to people on the ground, and flying the X-59 over several U.S. communities to gather data on public responses to the sound generated during supersonic flight and deliver that data set to U.S. and international regulators. So essentially, the aircraft is looking to solve the issues that affected the Concorde. More specifically, NASA's X-59 will fly faster than the speed of sound quietly. It will feature innovative technology to reduce loud sonic booms to a quiet thump. But how? First is its long, narrow airframe. The aircraft has a long, narrow shape that helps prevent shockwaves from forming, which is a significant factor in the creation of sonic booms. There are also canards, which are small winglets towards the front of the aircraft that also help in managing shockwaves. And it's just not NASA making moves. The Federal Aviation Administration is smoothing out the runway, so to speak. They're laying down rules to greenlight safe testing for civil supersonic aircraft. Plus, there's a buzz about them potentially lifting the ban on supersonic flights over land, which could open up new skies for these speedy birds. But government agencies are not the only ones trying to bring back this innovation and key into humans' obsession with speed. The private sector's not sitting back either, and one company leading the charge is Boom Supersonic. These folks are on a mission to revolutionize air travel by crafting a fleet of supersonic jets that'll redefine the way we soar through the skies. Based in Colorado, they're eyeing up a game-changing flight from London to New York in a mere three and a half hours with their Overture aircraft set to take off soon. The aircraft is expected to have a 64 to 80 passenger capacity and 4,250 nautical miles of range. The aircraft is intended to offer affordable supersonic flights on transoceanic routes at current business class long haul prices. Overture will fly at twice the speed of today's airliners and is designed to run on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. Now, manufacturers are not the only ones jumping in on the trend. Airlines are also catching up really fast. United Airways had their sights set on Boom Supersonic Marvels. The company went all in and ordered 15 of these super fast birds and are looking to get 35 more. Talk about getting big on the future. Boom's got a whopping 130 aircraft on the books waiting to zoom through the clouds. Tickets are expected to start at a cool $5,000 for a round trip from London to New York. Speed comes at a price, right? But hold on, supersonic planes aren't just about zipping travelers across the globe in record time. They've got other tricks up their sleeves, too. These speedy jets have been used for research and military missions. Understanding supersonic flight not only helps design better planes for super speedy travel, but also lends a hand in shaping what luxury and comfortable travel feels like. Executives find jets invaluable for maintaining tight schedules and conducting business seamlessly. This is where companies like Arian come into play. Arian was collaborating with some major aircraft manufacturers to develop the world's first supersonic business jet, the Arian AS-2. This collaboration merges Arian's expertise in supersonic technology with Lockheed Martin's extensive experience in engineering supersonic combat aircraft. In May 2014, it was announced that the Arian AS-2 would be part of a larger Arian SBJ redesign. Arian partnered with Airbus in September the same year. In December 2017, Airbus was replaced by Lockheed Martin. However, in February 2019, Boeing replaced Lockheed Martin. The Arian AS-2 12-passenger aircraft aimed for Mach 1.6 with a supersonic natural laminar flow wing for a minimum projected range of 4,750 nautical miles, a $4 billion development cost was anticipated for a market of 300 planes over 10 years and 500 overall for $120 million each. Anticipated to go into production around 2023, the AS-2 holds the promise of revolutionizing private jet travel by significantly reducing travel times. However, the cost implications for users will vary depending on their specific usage patterns and how much disposable income they have. 
While the need for speed is evident, the impact on costs will be a key consideration for businesses and individuals looking to embrace this innovative advancement in aviation. The Concorde, with its unparalleled speed and engineering, showcased the possibility of supersonic travel. Yet due to soaring operational costs and noise, it retired in 2003. Now, the future of supersonic flight seems to be making a comeback, aiming for affordability. Companies like Exosonic and Boom Supersonic are pioneering new supersonic aircraft designs, eyeing ticket prices similar to business class seats. Exosonic, for instance, envisions a New York to Los Angeles flight in just three hours, while Boom Supersonic plans to serve over 500 routes worldwide with their advanced aircraft. Overcoming technical, business, and environmental challenges may lead to a promising era of affordable, sustainable high-speed flights, reminiscent of the pioneering Concorde days, showing that groundbreaking innovations can resurface for everyone to enjoy. Bye for now.